What's up guys, it's Lauren and in this week's hair transformations video, I am going to transform this beautiful client into a nice blue. This is her session um, after we did just one. This is kind of typically what a client who is naturally a level three or four looks like after going a little bit lighter with me um, with a balayage technique that I normally do on most of my clients. So today we are going to be tackling her roots and then relightening the mid and ends as well and then putting over some creative color blue tone using some pull bryant so since my first session balayage basically gets them more of a solid tone all over today we are going to be blending the roots a bit more picking up all the dark we left out last time and giving her a more seamless blend at the very top So I am starting in the back and I am using some Blonde Me Schwarzkopf Lightener, mixing that in with some 1620 for this first bowl of application. And I like to do more of a heavy weave right at the hairline here because when she brings her hair forward, this is kind of the part of the face frame area around her face. So I like to do this a little bit more of a heavy highlight back to back. And our goal today, since we are going to be doing more of a blue tone, we are going to try and get her as light as possible so that it doesn't fade too green or anything. So whenever a client asks me if they want to do something on the blue side, I always warn them that it might fade green because everyone's hair lifts warm and to get that nice blue color that's more of like a medium to light blue it's got to be really really light um, and a lot of times if you have a lot of warmth in your hair if your hair isn't lifted to a really clean pale yellow tan then a lot of times the blue will fade green um, so i always like to warn my clients especially when you're doing a creative color tone to let them know what color um, you're doing is going to fade to and create realistic expectations and show them kind of what the maintenance would be when doing a certain color. And I think this is really important whenever you do any type of color and it's their first time if they don't really know how it's gonna fade. Um, I think creating these realistic expectations, um, it just kind of makes your client happier so that there's no surprises as they go home and wash their hair at home with the products that you recommend and all of that. Another thing that I like to mention in consultation before doing any type of creative color client is letting them know that the color does fade quite fast. So for instance, like she's going to be doing a blue. So depending on how vibrant her blue is, um, really determines on how long it lasts. So she was wanting to do more of like a medium um denim blue so this type of like tone and level and brightness of the blue tends to fade pretty fast like i would say a medium denim blue would probably last like just a few weeks if you're even if you're using like the best products like sulfate free shampoo cold water and stuff because the dye and the hair just tends to fade very fast so what i like to do on my clients that are a creative color is I like to mix um, a custom shade in their hair mask. So Pulp Riot has these um, hair masks called Santa Barbara, and I will mix in um, a custom shade that matches the color that they're getting that day so that they can refresh their color at home. This is very similar to like at home coloring, like for instance, you guys have probably know of like overtone but for me this is like a custom color that i make my clients so that um, they can maintain the shade at home and so after this appointment i did make her a color balm with santa barbara the pulp right hair mask and she's able to refresh the blue at home so that it doesn't turn green too fast and really get the longevity of the blue color that she gets today and so i really 
I highly recommend using or making color bombs for your clients or even giving your clients like some color to take home afterwards so that they can refresh it if they're doing a color that isn't super dark and might wash out a little bit faster than they would like it to. So as I get towards the top here, you'll see and notice that my weaves do get a little bit smaller. I would say my weave pattern at the top, wherever she parts her hair, is more on the smaller to medium side. And I do like to pick out any of the previous blonde that I have lightened from before just to prevent any breakage because I want to get these dark pieces all the way up to like a nice level 9 and 10. Also notice as I'm taking my sections for my weave pattern, I'm not really leaving too much um, negative space in between each of my weaves because her roots are really long. So this depends on how long my clients wait in between appointments. Um, for this particular client, it looked like she waited maybe like I want to say maybe like nine months i'm not really sure but she's got a lot of regrowth and anything more than like i would say three or four i just like to take my weaves back to back because there's too much dark and especially on a natural level like three or four if you don't do a heavy enough highlight back to back um then the blonde doesn't really like overpower the dark so i would definitely do like a heavy highlight all over if my client waits too long opposed to like if she were to come in within like three to four months of regrowth then i might start leaving in some dimension in between her weaves so as i'm working towards the front section of her face i am taking a more thicker weave everything a below the occipital and then everything above the occipital that's where I start to do those smaller to medium size weaves and again no negative space in between because her roots are very long but I like doing this technique over doing like a solid bleach out on the root because it allows them to have a softer grow out when they do wait this long. It's not too much contrast. They have some sort of blend with their roots growing in opposed to doing like a full solid um, bleach out to the root where they would just have like so much contrast against the dark roots to the light ends. And then for her money piece, I did a few slices back to back and then blended it all back with the rest with a few baby lights back to back. And this is generally what I like to do if I'm doing a very heavy highlighting pattern when they have so much regrowth in there. I will do a few slices just to give a lot of color around their face. And then once I finish with that, I continue my weave pattern, which is the smaller weaves off the top of the head, wherever they part their hair. And as I'm finishing up the top here, um, I do like to take my sectioning a little bit past wherever they part their hair. For instance, she parts her hair in the middle, so I am taking this side where I'm foiling on the left side of her head all the way kind of past the middle part, just to make sure that that middle part gets a nice lift. And then once I pass it and do a few foils past that middle part, that's when I move on to foiling the other side. So now that I have foiled her whole head, I'm going in with some Blonde Me and 10 volume on the ends and just kind of brightening up the blonde that we had lightened last time. I would say her blonde from last time is about a level 8 and so we're wanting it to get to more so of a level 9 and 10 so that this blue that we're about to put on her lifts um, and fades really nicely. So since we did a really heavy balayage last time and there's not as much dark this time in the foils that would need to be lightened, it will be easier for the hair that's foiled this time to reach a level 9 and 10. And so it makes it easy for me to just kind of lighten the blonde that we did last time um, that isn't quite a level 9 and 10 and everything just kind of gets a little bit more evened out and lighter overall. So here's my client's hair right after the raw lift. Um, we just toned her with some purple shampoo. I used the 
Pole Bright Barcelona Purple Shampoo. Probably left it on just for a few minutes, um, but it was enough to help tone out a lot of the yellow in her hair because some of the ends are really a nice level 10 there. Um, so this is going to make the blue fade really pretty and you can see how solid her ends are now that we've lightened everything and this is basically what a second session of a balayage would typically look like for me on a natural level three and four so now that her hair is completely dry i'm going in with the pulp bright semis for her blue So for her blue formula, I mostly mixed up some Nemesis and then I used some Nightfall just to deepen it a little bit. And then I added in some Nevermore and Lilac, which are both purple-based semi-permanents. Um, and I added in some purple just to help cancel out some of the yellow in her hair since we didn't pre-tone her. So this is going to help it from preventing the blue to turn more of a teal color. Because if I didn't add any purple to her formula, this would definitely rinse out more of the teal side. Um, since her hair is pretty yellow in some areas and this is more of a blue color. Alrighty guys, so here is my client's after. We gave her a nice fresh trim on the ends and some cute little curtain bangs to go with the whole color. Since we did more of a balayage retouch and lightened everything up, this is going to grow out really nicely. And I did make her a custom color color bomb so that she can refresh this blue at home. As this fades, it will fade a little bit more on the green blue side. So the color bomb that I made her will definitely help her keep in this vibrant um, smoky denim blue tone. So if you're thinking about going more of a blue tone and kind of scared of your hair turning green, um, you can always cancel out that green once all the blue fades out. So once my client's hair is um, completely faded and she's done using her color bomb and she's wanting to change up her color, the next color that I would suggest that we probably do to help cancel out any of the green that it might fade to would be to do more of a purple or pinky tone because those colors will help uh, neutralize the green that kind of stains the blonde essentially and then she'll be able to kind of do any color because pink and purple tend to fade the best but that is it for today's video guys thank you guys so much for watching and tuning in to this week's episode and i will talk to you guys next week